um, whether it's diabetes or heart disease or cancers and neurologic issues. And chronic illness is on the rise. And that's one of the reasons why summits and, and conferences like this exist is that we are in an epidemic of chronic illness. And it is a function of many, many things, including our um, soil quality, our food quality, our fact that we are more sedentary than ever, the fact that we are more stressed out than ever, the fact that nobody's sleeping, you know, sleep is huge commodity that we should really, really, really prioritize. There's a lot of issues on um, why we're getting to be a sicker kind of community, but it breaks down into multiple different categories. And one is heart disease, one is cancers, um, another one is neurodegenerative issues like Parkinson's and dementia, and another one is metabolic issues. And that includes a whole bunch of things that are getting worse, like fatty liver, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and their connection is insulin resistance. Um, so sugar dysregulation of sugar and the role of insulin is really, really becoming a problem because a hundred million Americans at least have something in the realm of prediabetes or diabetes. They don't even know it yet. Some of them don't even know it. So about 37 million people have diabetes and the rest, maybe 100 to 120 million people have insulin resistance. And that is increasing our risk for multiple issues and maybe even cancer risk. Um, and autoimmune disease is another big area. So immune dysfunction uh, because of the fact that we are um, just having so much stress in our system, whether it's environmental or self-induced. Um, DNA methylation is another big area of why, why our genes can manifest or not manifest. And I have a lot of patients who kind of worry about this methylation issue, but remember that methylation is just one aspect. And of detoxification and immune dis changes and activation of your B vitamins, but it is not the end all be all. And what I want to stress is that you can over methylate. So speaking about MTHFR, which is a gene that we check for is not the end all be all, but also when people sometimes go overboard with too much methylation support, and that can also be very dangerous. So we want to try to kind of be in that Goldilocks place where we're not overdoing something and we're not underdoing something. There's a sweet spot for where a lot of interventions are really helpful. Before I talk about what we're going to do to reduce our risk for chronic illness and to control our inflammation in our body, I want to just spend a few minutes on talking about how we break down. And I think this is really where the crux of my practice is. I've been kind of was when I started medicine, I found that a lot of people I practiced in Long Island, um, Great Neck actually. Um, so there was a lot of people that were starting their days at 6 a.m., dropping their kids off to daycare at 6 a.m., going into the city with these long commutes, um, having eight to 10 hour days, and then coming back home at eight o'clock, picking up their children from daycare, starting dinner. You know, sleep was not a priority. The stress of a job was not a priority. The time away from home was not a priority. It was, there was a lot of, just a lot of stress, stress on the system. And the autonomic nervous system is there to help keep us alive. It is, if I wanna pick up my pen, this is the voluntary nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is your nervous system that is autonomic, meaning it is helping you independent of your volition or your thought for about it. So it is including usually three things. The enteric nervous system is one part, but we're going to spend some time talking about the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. So the sympathetic system is your fight or flight. It's your, um, you know, get you away from that tiger. It elevates your heart rate. It elevates your blood pressure. It, it induces adrenaline in your body to get you to move. And it is really, really critical. Um, ancestrally, we've had this response to help us, you know, stave off, you know, threats from enemies, um, life threats, um, you know, running away from animals, tigers, and you know, even famines, when we're nutritionally deprived, when we can't get access, have access to nutrition, it's a stressor to our body. So sympathetic system has saved us. It's not wrong. It's not bad. Our balance for that, and these systems cannot be active together, is the sympathetic system is fight or flight. This is our parasympathetic system. This is our rest and our digest system. Very, very important in our healing. So the way our bodies were made was that the sympathetic system turns on, gets us away from danger. And then the parasympathetic system turns on and helps us rest and digest. And this is where the healing happens. This is our rest and digest. 
Our digestion, it's not only important because of our digestion system is where our 80%, 60 to 80% of our immune system sits in that digestion part in our gut and our rest, which is not just sleep. It's also how we think if we're walking around anxious and stressed out all day, that is not activating our parasympathetic system. So 80% of what I do in my medical practice as an internist is I just teach people how to activate their rest and digest. And my, my perception is that the difference between this, when people are on this sympathetic overdrive, fight or flight all the time, running, 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 they're depleting their rest and digest. And what we want to do is we want to try to raise that rest and digest. That's all we're trying to do. It's like recharging your battery. Imagine what you feel like when your battery is uncharged, when you're sitting somewhere and you see your iPhone battery, you know, on 1% panic, but we don't do that to ourselves. We're not, we're not treating ourselves as well as we do even our car. When that light comes on in our car saying battery, you know, the oil change, oil change, oil change, something, the engine, 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 flashing lights, we're not duct taping that. We're kind of addressing that issue because we know that car is going to break down. Well, that's the same thing with your body. Your body will break down if you don't address this rest and digest part. So what we feed our body, how we treat our bodies, um, microbiome, the gut microbiome is also in that digest part. And where our immune system is, is really critical to kind of our healing and also rest. So the autonomic nervous system, just a summary, is the sympathetic system is adrenaline. It's it's epinephrine, it's, it's norepinephrine. It's cortisol and cortisol is not bad or good. People have a very bad rap about cortisol. There's a lot of hype about, you know, cortisol put me, I have belly fat because of my cortisol. Um, cortisol is bad for you. But when they looked at studies of mice and they took away all the stress response, those mice died. So it's not that it's bad for us. It's the fact that we keep it turned on for every little thing. That is the problem. It's turning on and it's um, keeping us inflamed. It's giving us chronic inflammation because of the fact that we're telling it. And what are we doing? We're telling it because we're not sleeping. We're sitting too much. We're also sitting, you know, we're upset about the emails that aren't going out. We're upset about sitting in traffic. We're upset about our, our kid not making the, you know, the soccer team, whatever it is. We're always kind of getting that sympathetic system to trigger. And it's not just about safety and running away from that tiger anymore. But when the sympathetic system is activated, it's giving our blood flow more to our muscles. It's an anti-inflammatory because if you can imagine ancestrally, if you're running away from a tiger, you don't want to stop and say, oh my gosh, I have back pain. I have my knee pain. So it's an anti-inflammatory so that you can get to move. So if your house is on fire or if you have your child fell down on a, on a, you know, on a playground, you need to run there. You need to pick them up and you see these stories of People doing heroic measures when when you're like, how did they lift that car off their child? Well, this is that sympathetic adrenaline response that kind of gets you to the point where you're just there to help your child or help you survive. And it's also increasing vigilance because our pupils dilate. Um, and when we're running from a tiger, we don't want to be sleeping. We don't want to have to go to the bathroom. We don't have to want to urinate. We don't want to reproduce when our bodies are constantly under threat. So we need to signal that that system to say, you know what? Things are okay. Parasympathetic system, which is the rest and digest, it is the biggest nerve innervation to it is the vagus nerve. And in my practice, we talk about vagal nerve stimulation all day long. It's really, really important to calm down that vagus nerve. And that vagus nerve inflammation was one part of a huge reason why people have COVID and long haul COVID. They found that the vagus nerve is very inflamed with COVID and long haul COVID. So in my long haul COVID patients, um, my patients who've had adverse reactions to vaccines and even viruses in general, my chronic fatigue patients, we work a lot on vagus nerve healing from many, many, many different modalities. But the concept is to support that rest and digest, support that vagus nerve. And, you know, it's also in charge of our fertility because when you're constantly stressed out, there's a lot of infertility out there. And it's not just because women are stressed. It's also because that our parasympathetic system doesn't have enough juice. Our vagus nerve doesn't have enough juice sometimes. So multiple reasons why fertility is an issue. Oh, sorry. Let me just uh, hold on one second. I need to plug in, plug in my board. Sorry, guys. Um, multiple reasons why we need to have um, access to that vagus nerve. But 
Fertility is also on the rise and sleep quality is also really, really important. And parasympathetic system helps us rest, helps us keep calm. And even for things like anxiety, um, you know, we need to kind of give ourselves some tools. So breath, like just taking a deep breath will activate your vag vagal tone. If you exhale longer than you inhale, activates your parasympathetic, it activates your vagal tone. Mm -hmm.